Hey guys, Brett here from Astartes Gaming with a, another Mountain Blade modding tutorial. Um, this was a request. Somebody asked me to do a tutorial on how to transfer. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly how they phrased it. Um, I'm going to use the word resources, but that may not mean anything to you. Basically, the way that assets are um, utilized in Mountain Blade is every module, which is like a mod or the vanilla base game, has a bunch of resource packs that are in BRF files. And those contain all the different objects in the game, whether they be armor, weapons, um, character models, animations, or um, world objects. And so I'm going to make a tutorial today on how to take, say, a armor pack from one mod and transfer it to another. Um, I did not plan this tutorial, so I'm just kind of winging it. Hopefully it turns out good, um, but I do this all the time, so it's not like I'm figuring it out as I go. Um, I'll do my best to show every tiny little detail. Um, that way you're not left guessing on anything. I know a lot of people have that issue with other tutorials. I've tried to be pretty good about that in my other ones, so it, I mean it seems like you guys were pretty pleased with it. I don't think I missed anything. I'll do my best to do that again here. Um, so you're gonna need at least two tools here. Um, the first of which being Morgs Mountain Blade editor that you're seeing right here. And the second being OpenBRF, which you're seeing here. Um, this is basically what's gonna let you open these files and see what's inside. So the first thing I would do is uh, something you've probably already done if you're watching this tutorial, and that is find what you wanna transfer. So um, again, I didn't plan this. I'm not really sure what we're gonna do, but uh, that'll make this a better tutorial, right? Because you're gonna have to see the whole process. Um, so we're gonna add something to a Clash of Kings, but what do we wanna add? Um, I'm not sure. Let's go into maybe Britainwalda here. And then we wanna to go to resource. It's always gonna be in here. And then you'll see a bunch of different BRF files. Now, depending on the mod, uh, these could be really well organized or really, really poorly organized. Um, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry for the interruption. Uh, for example, in this particular mod, um, a lot of the resource files aren't named in English. So uh, you kind of have to guess what they are unless you speak whatever language this is. Um, I think it's safe to assume that this is armor based on you know some of the letters in there. Let's open it and find out. Okay, and after a second there, it's gone ahead and opened up. And so this is, yes, armor. Um, this is the, looks like the first of many armor files for Brittenwalda. Um, basically what you're looking at here is this is the actual uh, model that you'll see in game. And then these are the LODs, which basically lowers the uh, poly count when they get further and further away. So you can basically just have this, for example, and just just that one, um, and that'll work just fine. Um, the only issue is that if you have every armor in the game like that with no LODs, um, it's gonna lag your game. Uh, it'll perform really poorly. So you wanna keep those if you've got them. Um, if you want more information on this sort of thing, I would watch my other tutorial on how to make custom armors because I go into a lot of detail on like how to manipulate this stuff. Uh, there's really nothing special about this one, but uh, I guess this will work fine as, a, as an example. So we're going to add this coat of plates here from Brittenwalda to a Clash of Kings. This armor I feel like is probably already in a Clash of Kings, but it's fine. Um, so what we want to do is we want to open up uh, let's see, I want to be in this, and let's go modules, so we'll open one Clash of Kings, and the other, again, this is just the root file um, for Mountain Blade, so this is like Steam, I have Steam apps twice because I set it up weird on my other hard drive, but um, Mountain Blade, Warband, and your Steam file. Then you want to go to modules. This is all the different mods you have installed. You can see I have quite a few. Um, and this is going to be, that's the Clash of Kings, so this will be Britainwalda. Then we go to resources, and we find the one that we just opened. That's this guy here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to copy, and then go over here, resources, and paste. 
Okay, step one, check. Next thing you want to do is open this back up. And so you've transferred the resources over, and that's going to take all the meshes with it, but not the textures. So any item in here that you want to transfer over, you're going to need to go find the textures for. Uh, and there's going to be at least one up to probably three for each one. So if you click on material, you're going to see here for this coat of plates. I'm not sure why they call it that. There's no plates on this. It's all fur and cloth. But uh, for this particular armor, you have a diffuse. You have a bump map, which is the normal map here. And then you have a specular, which is the, I like to call it the shiny map. This basically makes chain mail and shit shiny. Um, everything that's cloth is black and it doesn't shine. So we need to find all of those things. So if we go back to Brickmalda here, we'll go into textures and I'm only going to do coat of plates one. I'm not going to do all of these, but if you want to transfer everything, you'll have to find all of those textures. It can be a pain in the ass. Uh, so coat of plates. Open that up and let's see coat of plates. Apparently there's quite a few of them. So we'll type in the one and that should norm or uh, narrow things down a bit. So we want one normal and just regular one. We'll go ahead and copy these. And then I have way too many things going on right now. Um, let's see, we'll go into textures here and we're just gonna paste them over. Perfect. And yes, apparently some of these armors already <laughs> are already in uh, Clash of Kings. But apparently not this specific one, so that's good. Because otherwise it, we would have just overwrote those. Uh, right, so what was the other one that we needed? Coat of Plate Specular. Okay. Now these are always going to be named differently too. There's no uniform naming, at least not from most mod authors. Again, it depends on whose mod you're opening. So we'll copy Coat of Plate Specular and whoops, we'll drop that into here as well. So that all three textures are now in the new mod destination. Again, we're going from Brittenwalda to Clash of Kings. So all three have been transferred into the textures folder of our Clash of Kings mod folder. So that part is done. Now what you want to do is go ahead and you don't need to be in this particular BRF file anymore. What you want to do is open, go to a Clash of Kings. I keep looking for the A. I don't know why I got rid of it on that. Go to resources and then find the one that you pasted over. So I've completely forgotten what it was called. It was something in not English. There we go. Okay. So you can see, oh, no, you can't because it's taken a while to load. I've got way too many things happening. Rendering videos, uh, obviously recording. Somebody's trying to message me on Steam. Anyway, um, Code of Plates 1, you can see that the textures are showing up. If we go to the one that we didn't transfer, you can see it looks like this. And that means that there's no texture there. Uh, or it means that you edited your textures in GIMP. For whatever reason, the way GIMP compresses DDS textures, they won't show up in this program. Um, they still work fine, though. They just don't show up in OpenBRF. But yeah, these are all basically trash. So I'm just going to delete everything that's not the one that we want. But uh, you can see, actually, hold on, this is a good example. Some textures are used more than once, so uh, which one was that? Uh, this is already in the game. That's the one we saw in the file already. But um, you don't want that hanging around because that will basically like double up the, the model. So I'm going to get rid of everything that isn't the one that we're adding. So all of this can go. There we go. So we just have Code of Plates 1 with the three LOD files. And that is what we're going to transfer over. It's basically already been transferred at this point. Um, so we're going to save that. Then what you need to do before anything else moving forward is go into your Clash of Kings uh, file. And actually what I'm going to do before I do that, because I cannot remember this freaking name, is I'm going to copy this so I don't have to worry about misspelling it. Uh, and then you want to go to, mm, not menus, um, module.ini, open that up, and it should open. Um, I recommend using a text editor. This is, I forget what it's called, Sublime Text 2. Uh, it makes things a lot more clear than if you're using like Notepad, but you can use Notepad. Um, this is just easier to see, and it counts things for you. And... Uh, 
we're just going to throw it on the end here. So load underscore mod underscore resource equals whatever the hell that says. And this is really important because if you don't do this step, nothing else will matter because the mod will not load the resource that you've just transferred over. And so it may as well not be there. Um, definitely make sure that you do this and then go ahead and save that. Um, if this is the first time you're doing this, I would recommend backing up the module INI just to be safe. But I've added a lot of stuff to this one. Um, I've added a couple down here. Um, I think there's more up there, maybe more at the other end as well. But yeah, so now that we've done that, the mod will recognize the new resource. And that is going to be important because the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually add this new armor into the game. So to do that, Morgs is going to come into play here. Um, if you are using this for the first time, it's going to prompt you to fill in your module destination. Um, it's basically going to look like this. So basically, uh, this is not important to you unless you're using the module system, which uh, you're going to be using like Python coding for that. Don't even worry about it. Um, this is the one that you want. This is for existing mods and just make sure it goes to your mod file. So this is the Clash of Kings mod folder that we just dropped all that stuff into. Uh, then you hit save and you've got options for troops, parties, blah, 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 blah. We care about items. So what you're going to want to do is, uh, I guess, try to find something similar. You don't have to, but I would recommend finding something similar to what you're trying to add in. So in this case, we already know that there's a variant of this armor in the game, so we'll just try to find it. And uh, yeah, heavy fur armor. So if you click on this, this will bring up all the details from that item. You can see it's a body armor. Um, it is merchandise, so it will be found in shops. Uh, apparently it doesn't cover hair or legs or penetrate shields. Um, any capabilities here? No. And then you can add modifiers. This one can be tattered, ragged, or thick, but you can add whatever you want. And then, of course, cost, weight, how often this shows up in shops, uh, how much armor it has. Difficulty is um, the strength required to use it. So if I put 10, the character has to have 10 strength in order to wear this armor or to wield that weapon or whatever. And then if you are using a weapon, um, you can determine the primary attack type damage so cut pierce or blunt uh, for an armor that's obviously redundant and uh, this is the secondary type and then this sets the actual damage values um, so for example let's just find like a sword because I don't want to spend too much attention on armor because obviously some of you might be trying to do swords some of you might be trying to do spears I don't know helmets um, so if you do a weapon for example this is what you're gonna see uh, there's, you know, a couple things you need to determine. Is it a one-handed or two-handed weapon? What type of weapon is it? That'll set the um, the base animations for it. Again, merchandise. Um, this this sets the sounds. So if you're using like a spear, for example, you're gonna want to use um, wooden parry. That way, if you're blocking with the spear, it sounds like it's hitting wood versus metal. Um, primary or secondary. This is more important for AI. So uh, if you set it to secondary, for example, they're always going to pull out a different weapon first and use that as a backup. Or if you set it as primary, then that's always the first weapon that they're going to pull out. Um, bonus against shields, if you know, you're making an axe or something, you might want to tick that. Um, can't be used on horseback for things like heavy crossbows or I don't know. I don't see any reason why you couldn't use that stuff on horseback. But if you don't want your weapon used on horseback, there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, these all sort of, you know, are self-explanatory. Um, helmets, if, you know, you don't want the beard clipping through it, you can do covers beard. Uh, it basically just hides facial hair when they put it on. And uh, unique means that there's only one of them, as you might expect. So uh, I don't, I guess it'll let you do unique and merchandise. That's weird. But uh, it, it should mean, like, for example, the, the various Valyrian steel swords in... A Clash of Kings um, are unique. There's only one of each. But yeah, so you guys, I'm sure, get the idea. So let's go back to our coat of plates. If I could spell. And we'll just do heavy fur armor. And if you click add right here, 
this is going to add an item to the game using the selected armor as a template or the selected item as a template so in this case if I click add it's basically gonna give me this heavy fur armor um, in everything but name so I'm gonna copy this and we'll hit add and so you can see that this is stayed uh, but this stuff reset so the identification stuff is the only thing that changed the mesh is still the same all the stats are still the same and so I'm gonna call this the same thing because that's what it is uh, but what I need to do is I need to go here and we're going to click rename so I can copy this and then we're gonna paste it in here do not add a new mesh just update the existing one and it'll give you that little sound to confirm it and you can see it right here then what I like to do to keep things very very simple is take the same mesh name and make that the item ID so ITM make sure you leave that there and then underscore whatever the mesh name is that way um, you can find things a lot easier in the editor uh, some mod authors will change them and it is the most frustrating thing to deal with when you're trying to get in there and tweak stuff because there's really no way to track them down um, if they've changed it from the mesh name to here uh, you can't search things by this name this only shows up in game if you search here it's got to be in the item ID and so if the item ID doesn't match the mesh then you really have nothing to go on other than guessing um, so I would recommend always mesh name here and then to confirm you have to click add item if you don't click this all your changes are for not so if you have done this this process here don't click that yet and click over here everything's gone you got to do it all over again so click add item you'll get this confirmation and it'll add to the bottom here and so there you go your item is now in the game however if you're like me for example and you want to use this uh, in the game for yourself or for a companion or something it's kind of a pain in the ass to run around and try to find it in the shop or the various shops so save your changes um, it'll ask you if you want to create a time stamped backup of your item kinds which is what we're editing right now if this is your first time doing this I would suggest doing it just so that you have the original item kinds thing if you are needing to go back or whatever um, for this time I'll say yes and this is just a confirmation of your save okay so that part is done again the item is in the game now what we want to do is go back into your clash of kings folder and go to menus.txt uh, no I want to open that in sublime text so I can see shit uh, there we go okay so what we want to look for and I have way too much of this selected uh, crap I don't remember which one it is I think it's this one so find item next range I believe it is this value right here and it should show up again once more where is it there so you can see how these two match uh, and a bunch of the other ones are going to be this. So you're looking for, I believe it's the third string value that is not ending in 184, or if it's a different mod, it'll end in something different. But you're going to see this first one. Uh, here, let me re, let me re, try that. So the first thing you want to do is search for this right here. So MNO cheat find item next range. Now, not every mod will have this. Uh, this is when you go into the cheat menu and there's a find item dot 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 you click on it and it shows you every item in the game in like the shop menu type thing this is what that is um, if the mod doesn't have that script then you're out of luck but uh, if it does you can change the values here to show your newly added item so um, find this string and then you'll see a really long number a couple of like one or two digit numbers and then that same really long number again immediately following that is going to be a different long number it'll be the third big string basically so we added one new item what we want to do is not what I just did um, deselect please thank you uh, delete or I guess replace that six in this case with a seven so basically just add one to whatever that number was because we added one new item. If you added three new items, then add three to that number. Um, and then we have it one more here. It's important that you change both. So we're gonna make that a seven as well. And then we'll go file, save. So basically we just opened up our cheat menu 
item thing by one more number so that it'll show that newly added item at the end. Uh, now let's go in game and see if that worked. Okay, so we're in a Clash of Kings right now, and I'm actually going to load up an existing save game to show you guys that this is save compatible. So um, this is actually from the Let's Play series I did. I'm going to open up this one because this is the latest one. So day 155, this isn't like a fresh save. This is well into the game. And uh, we'll take a look and see if this worked. Which it should have. Because I did this like, I think, 10 times yesterday. So we'll open up the cheat menu, then we go to camp, and then we go to cheat menu, and then we go to find an item. And it's always going to be at the very, very end. Uh, so we want to go to, I believe it was this one. And if we scroll to the bottom, it's lagging like crazy because I've added a ton of shit to this mod. Um, there it is. Bingo. So there we have it. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see all the other stuff I've added. Uh, obviously, a lot of this stuff was not in the vanilla game. Uh, this is like one of my subscribers' characters' custom shield. Uh, I added a bunch of... Uh, Variants of like the northern armors and stuff um, Another custom shield uh, Some custom armor You guys get the idea um, So yeah, if you want to add a resource from an existing mod um, To another existing mod that is exactly how you do it Again, it's going to be a lot more work if you're adding multiple items because not only do you have to get every single texture for all of those items, but then you have to repeat that process we did in morgues uh, several times over once for every single individual item. And again, when you are adding them to the cheat menu, you are going to want to add a number that corresponds to how many items that you added. Uh, alternatively, if the mod doesn't have a cheat menu that allows you so like for example some of them when you go to cheat menu it won't have find an item it just won't have that menu um, or if you just don't want to do that step um, what I would recommend doing is putting the item frequency really really high for your new item that way you can find it in shops because for example the default value for the one we just did was 20 so we're not gonna find it anywhere um, we could go to pretty much any any shop in the land and we might get lucky and find it but uh, chances are we probably won't at least not on the first go round um, you would probably also have to wait um, a week in game to get them to reset so I, I would recommend again if you have that option to add it to the cheat menu because if you've been to markets recently their inventories will have to reset before your item could get added and that could take a full in-game week. Um, but again, you may not have that option, so just letting you know. Anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys found this useful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you're having issues with the various programs involved, I can't help you there. I didn't write the programs. So, uh, you know, visit the forums where you downloaded them or whatever and talk to the, the program writers. Uh, I can't help you with issues with OpenBRF. I, I use it. That's, that's it. I didn't make it. So anyways, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.